أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Lesson number 188 سورة الفرقان آية number 35-42 وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا مُوسَى الْكِتَابَ And certainly we gave to Musa a.s. the book وَجَعَلْنَا And we made مَعَهُ with him أَخَاهُ هَارُونَ His brother Harun We made him وَزِيرًا A helper an assistant. An assistant to who? To Musa a.s. But what happened? فَقُلْنَا ذَهَبَا إِلَى الْقَوْمِ الَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا And we said, Go both of you to the people who have denied our signs. And who were they? The people of Fir'aun. الَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا refers to who? The people of Fir'aun. Because Musa a.s. was sent to Fir'aun. To deliver the message to him and also to release the Bani Israel from his captivity. But what happened? Fir'aun and his people rejected and فَدَمَّرْنَاهُمْ تَدْمِيرًا And we destroyed them with complete destruction. In Truth Al-Furqan, earlier, we learned that the people of Mecca, they demanded from Prophet ﷺ that if you are a prophet of Allah, then how come you do not have an angel accompanying you? And that angel, how come he is not with you a warner. How come he is not delivering the message with you? So they demanded that if there is a messenger, he should not be coming alone. He should be coming with someone. Somebody should be accompanying him and somebody should be acknowledging him, testifying to his truthfulness and only then we're going to believe. But over here, what do we see? That the example of Musa a.s. is given. That Musa a.s. was not sent alone to Fir'aun and his people. Rather, he was sent with his brother Harun a.s. who was also a messenger. But what was the reaction of the people who were not interested in believing? That no matter what sign they see, no matter what evidence they see, no matter who they see supporting the truth, believing in the truth, they do not accept. They do not believe. So over here, what do we see? That وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا مُوسَ الْكِتَابَ Al-Kitab over here refers to a collection of teachings that were given to Musa a.s. and Harun a.s. before they were sent to Fir'aun. Because remember the Torah, when was it given? After the destruction of Fir'aun. Remember that. So over here we are learning that Musa a.s. was sent with the Kitab. So Kitab does not mean Torah, rather it means a collection of teachings and instructions that they were given to deliver to Fir'aun and his people. And remember that a messenger, he is given two types of revelation. One is in the form of the scripture, in the form of the book, which is recited. Like for example, the Quran, or for example, the Torah. And the second type of revelation is wahi that is not recited. Wahi that is ghayr matlu. So over here, al-kitab refers to wahi ghayr matlu. وَجَعَلْنَا مَعَهُ أَخَاهُ هَارُونَ وَزِيرًا Who is a wazir? Wazir is from the root letters? Wa and what does wizard mean? Burden, weight. Now, if a person is given a responsibility, with the responsibility comes a lot of burden, a lot of work, a huge task to perform. So, wazir is someone who carries the weight of the work for you, meaning who shares the burden with you. So, who is a wazir? An assistant, a helper. So, Musa a.s. he was sent with a wazir. But those people who did not wish to believe, they refused to believe. فَقُلْنَا ذَهَبَا So we said to both of them, Musa and Harun, that both of you go إِلَى الْقَوْمِ الَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا To those people who have denied our ayat. Now at this point, when Musa a.s. and Harun a.s. were being sent to Fir'aun and his people, Fir'aun and his people had not yet denied. But how were they described? الَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا Because in Allah's knowledge, they were going to deny. Because Allah's knowledge is not limited to the present, the past, or the future. Rather, He knows about everything. So what happened then? When Musa a.s., Harun a.s., when they went, when they delivered the message, what was the reaction of Fir'aun and his people? Denial, rejection. So as a result, فَدَمَّرْنَاهُمْ تَدْمِيرًا So we destroyed them with a definite destruction. Dammarna from the root letters, dal mim ra. And tadmir is to suddenly attack something, to pounce at something in order to finish it off immediately. 
And it also gives a meaning of demolishing something. So if you think about it, a building, how is it demolished? Generally, how is it demolished? With dynamites or something like that. So as a result, within moments, within a few moments, the entire building has collapsed. So this is what tadmir is. That within seconds, within moments, you attack something and it's finished, it's destroyed. In one go, in one shot. And tadmir is also to cause irreparable damage to something. Like for example, when a building is collapsed, can you fix it? No. When it has been demolished, can you fix it? No. It's irreparable damage. So, فَدَمَّرْنَاهُمْ تَدْمِيرًا How were Fir'aun and his people destroyed? That within moments they were drowned in the sea. Within seconds, within moments, and all of them finished, eradicated. And this was irreparable damage that was caused to the entire civilization. Because if a building is finished, okay, you can make a new structure. If half the people are finished, okay, the population will soon multiply. But if the entire nation, every single individual is drowned, then it is such damage that cannot be repaired at all. So, فَدَمَّرْنَاهُمْ تَدْمِيرًا And in this is a severe warning for the people of Mecca. That you are demanding many things, but still you are not willing to believe. And if you don't believe, like the previous people, then your end will not be any different than theirs. وَقَوْمَ نُوحٍ And also the people of Nuh. Meaning, and we also destroyed the people of Nuh. When? لَمَّا كَذَّبُوا الرُّسُلَ When they denied the messengers. Now if you think about it, how many messengers were sent to the people of Nuh? How many messengers? Only one messenger. But why is it said, لَمَّا كَذَّبُوا الرُّسُلَ When they denied the messengers. Yes? Okay, because denying one messenger is like denying all of the messengers. Why else? There are other reasons as well. If you deny the first messenger, if you deny the concept of prophethood, if you deny the concept of messengership, then what does it mean? You're denying all of the messengers. So to them, the first messenger was sent. And when they denied the first messenger, it meant any messenger who would come after him, obviously they would deny him as well. There's another reason as well. Which is that Nuh a.s. was in them for how long? 950 years. And in that time, many people can come and go. So you can imagine he was in them for so long and he warned them continuously. So yes, they denied one person. But it was equivalent to denying many messengers given the time that he spent warning those people. So لَمَّا كَذَّبُوا الرُّسُلَ What happened? These people were punished. But how were they punished? أَغْرَقْنَاهُمْ We drowned them. وَجَعَلْنَاهُمْ لِلنَّاسِ آيَةً And we made them for the people a sign. What kind of a sign? A warning. A lesson. That if the first people to whom the messenger was sent, if they denied, then any people after them, if they deny as well, their end would not be any different. So the people of Nuh were made a sign for all people. For all mankind, any person who comes after them. And if you think about it, this great flood at the time of Nuh a.s. It was such a great calamity and this flood is still mentioned in the literature of many, many religions. People, they remember it. They tell their children about the story. So, وَجَعَلْنَاهُمْ لِلنَّاسِ آيَةً We made them a sign for the people. A big lesson. وَأَعْتَدْنَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ عَذَابًا أَلِيمًا And we have prepared for the wrongdoers a painful punishment. What does it mean by ظالمين over here? ظالمين can be understood as these particular ظالمين who denied the first messenger. And secondly, a ظالمين can also be understood in general. That any people who are like them, who do not take a lesson, who do not believe in the messenger, who do not follow the messenger, they will meet the same end. In Surah Al-A'raf, Ayah 64, we learn, فَكَذَّبُوهُ فَأَنْجَيْنَاهُ وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُ فِي الْفُلْكِ وَأَغْرَقْنَا الَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا But they denied him, so we saved him and those who were with him in the ship. And we drowned those people who denied our signs. What do we learn from these ayat so far? What's the lesson in this for us? How would you relate it with yourself? What's the main warning that is being given over here? 
That if you look at it, Fir'aun and his people who were sent to them, two messengers. The people of Nuh a.s., the first messenger. But what was their reaction? Of denial, of disbelief, of disobedience. And what was the end? Destruction. In the dunya, even such people cannot survive. So what do we learn? That the messenger has been sent by Allah. Why? So that he is obeyed. Every messenger who is sent, why is he sent? لِيُطَاعَ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ So that he is obeyed. And when we learn about the teachings of the messenger, we cannot have a disobedient attitude towards it. No. When we learn about the teachings of the messenger, the instructions of the messenger, our duty as believers is to obey, to follow, to listen. And if we don't listen, then we will suffer the consequences even in the dunya. Because what do we see over here? The people who denied the messengers, who refused to obey them, they suffered in the dunya. So if we suffer, one of the reasons could be that we're not paying much attention to the instructions of the Prophet وَعَادًا وَثَمُودًا And we also destroyed the people of Ad and the people of Thamud. Who else? وَأَصْحَابَ الرَّسِّ And the people of the Ras. The companions of Ras. Ras is from the root letters Ras in Sin. And it's used for a well. But what kind of a well is Ras? It's used for an unconstructed well. Typically, a well is not just a hole in the ground at the bottom of which is water. No. You have to build a wall inside. Like you have to layer the inside part with, for example, bricks or stones or something like that. Why? So that when it rains, the side walls, they do not collapse. Because if they collapse, then what's going to happen? The well is going to close. And also, in order to secure the well, what do people do? They build a wall around it, like a small wall around it. It is for safety purposes. And also so that any trash, any garbage does not fall into the well. Because if it does fall into the well, then the water is going to get contaminated. It will not be safe. So, a rus is what kind of a well? A well that is not constructed. It's just like a hole in the ground, at the bottom of which is water. And a rus is also understood as ism alam, the proper name of a well. Now, who are the people of Ar-Ras? Ashab Ar-Ras. We have learned about Ad, we have learned about Samud. What about Ashab Ar-Ras? Ashab Ar-Ras are only mentioned twice in the Qur'an. In Surah Al-Furqan and in Surah Qaf. And according to At-Tabari, the people of Ras, they are the same people as Ashab Al-Ukhdud. They are the same people as Ashab Al-Ukhdud, which are mentioned in Surah Al-Buruj. Who are they? Who are the Ashab Al-Ukhdud? The people who dug trenches. And all of those people who had become believers, what would they do? They would throw them into those trenches that were filled with fire. So, Ashab Al-Ras are the same people. Because Ras is what? A well. And what did these people do? Ashab Al-Ukhdud, they dug trenches. They were known as the people of the trenches. According to some scholars, Ashab Al-Ras and Ashab Al-Ukhdud, they are the same. However, others, they differentiate between them. Now, their story is not mentioned in detail in the Qur'an. Like the story of the people of Adu, the people of Thamud is mentioned. Their story is not mentioned in detail. Whoever they were, whatever they did, what do we learn? That some well had something to do with them. Either they lived around a well, or some scholars say that when the punishment came, it was such that it came from the well, that from the well the place started collapsing inside it began to cave in inside and it took their dwellings along and some say that Shu'ayb was the prophet who was sent to them so there's a lot of difference of opinion whoever they are what's the point of mentioning them over here that when these people when they denied the messenger even they were not spared you don't even know their story you don't even know their account you don't even know who they were where they lived when they lived what they did but what do we see? That a person who denies the messenger, who does not listen to the messenger, then his ultimate end is destruction and loss. And it's not just the Ashab al-Ras, but وَقُرُونًا بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ kathira, And generations between that, many, meaning many generations between that. Meaning we destroyed many generations between that as well. Now what does it mean by between that? between the people of Ras and 
the people of Ad and Samud. So during the time between the people of Ad and Samud and the people of Ras, many generations who came, what happened to them? When they denied, they were destroyed, they were punished. And how many were they? Allahu A'lam, Allah knows their number. In Surah Ibrahim, Ayah 9, we learn, أَلَمْ يَأْتِكُمْ نَبَأُ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ قَوْمِ نُوحٍ وَعَادٍ وَثَمُودٍ وَالَّذِينَ مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ لَا يَعْلَمُهُمْ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Has there not reached you the news of those before you, the people of Nuh and Ad and Samud and those after them? No one knows them but Allah. No one knows about their names, no one knows about their details, no one knows about where they lived, what they did. Only Allah knows about them. But when they denied, they were punished. وَكُلَّمْ ضَرَبْنَا لَهُ الْأَمْسَالِ And for each we presented examples as warnings. Meaning all of these people who were destroyed, they were not destroyed for no reason. No. They were destroyed, the punishment came to them when the hujjah was established against them, when the truth was shown to them. And they denied it, when they refused to believe in it. So وَكُلَّنْ Meaning to each people, each of these nations, ضَرَبْنَا We struck لَهُ for it الْأَمْسَالِ Examples. Why? So that they could understand the truth. So that the truth would become clear to them. We gave them many examples. We taught them many lessons. We showed them many things. They were shown miracles. The messenger was sent who explained the truth to them. Many examples were given. But what happened when they refused to believe? وَكُلَّنْ تَبَّرْنَا تَتْبِيرًا And each we destroyed with total destruction. We destroyed them completely, utterly. تَبَّرْنَا تَتْبِيرًا This is different from تَدْمِير But it means destruction as well. So how is it different? تَتْبِير is from تَبَرَ And تَبْر تِبْر is to break something into tiny, tiny pieces. And it is to destroy something in such a way that none of its signs remain. None of its remnants remain. You cannot even tell what it was. Like for example, if you see tiny pieces of shattered glass on the floor, and it's clear glass, tiny, tiny pieces, can you tell what it was before? Not unless you saw it breaking. So this is what tatbir is. To destroy something, such that not even the signs remain, so that you cannot even recognize it. You don't even know what it was. وَكُلَّنْ تَبَّرْنَا تَتْبِيرًا We destroyed them completely. So what do we see over here? That the people who were destroyed were not destroyed without any reason. It's not that Allah wished to destroy them for no genuine reason, no. It was because the proof was established against them. The warning was given to them. The truth was clarified to them. But still, when they persisted on their denial, then what happened? The punishment was sent to them. And they were destroyed in a way that nothing of theirs remains till today. Nothing of theirs. No signs remain. No remnants remain. وَلَقَدْ And certainly, أَتَوْ They have come. Who? The people of Mecca. That certainly they have come عَلَى الْقَرْيَةِ Upon the town. Which town? التي أمطرت مطر السوء The town which was showered with the rain of evil. أمطرت مطر السوء From the root letters, ميم طارة, مطر. What does مطر mean? Rain. And أمطرة is to send rain. And from that أمطرت. And some scholars say that أمطرة is used for such rain that brings punishment, that brings destruction. And matara, the verb matara, is used for such rain which brings benefit, blessings. It's a source of goodness. So umtirat matara so they were rained, they were showered with the rain of evil. What does it mean by this rain of evil? Meaning it was such rain that brought death and destruction to them. That brought death and destruction to them. Now who were these people? Which people? were showered with an evil rain, the people of Lut, a.s. How were they punished? How were they punished? That first of all, with a blast, they were picked up. This is why they're also known as Mu'tafikat. They were picked up and turned upside down, and then on top of that, a rain was sent down upon them, of brimstone. 
that completely destroyed them, causing devastation. So the people of Mecca, وَلَقَدْ أَتَوْ They have seen, they come upon the end of these people, they come upon their remnants, and they come and witness this place. When? On their journeys. To Syria especially, when the people of Mecca would travel back and forth for their trade journeys, they would go by these places where the towns of Sodom and Gomorrah existed. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when you see this end, when you see these people, when you can barely walk through that place, because it is said that this place is such that as you walk through it, it's very harmful. So, أَفَلَمْ يَكُونُوا Then are they not, يَرَوْنَهَا They see it. Then these people, do they not see it? Do they not see the ultimate end of these people? That how they were punished and what remains of them? We learn in Surah Al-Safat, Ayah 137 to 138, that, وَإِنَّكُمْ وَبِاللَّيْلِ أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ And indeed you pass by them in the mornings and also at night. When? During your journeys. Then will you not use reason? Will you not use your intellect and take a lesson from these people? Similarly, we learn in Surah Al-Hijr, Ayah 76, وَإِنَّهَا لَبِسَبِيلٍ مُقِيمٍ That indeed those cities are situated on an established road. Established road that people usually undertake for their journeys. So, they pass by them. Do they not see them? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, بَلْ كَانُوا Rather the problem is that لَا يَرْجُونَ نُشُورًا They do not fear resurrection. They do not look forward to resurrection. And because they do not have fear about the hereafter, this is why no matter what they see, they do not take a lesson from it. Now, Bel Kanu, Kanu has been understood as the people of Lut and also the people of Mecca. That when they pass by the people of Lut, they do not take a lesson. Why? Because La Yarjuna Nushura. What does Nushur mean? Resurrection. And Nushur primarily, Nun Shinra, it means to spread. Because imagine when all of the people are going to be resurrected, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? They're going to spread everywhere. Just imagine if there are a thousand people in one place, what's going to happen? They will spread. Now imagine all people, all mankind, as they are resurrected, and not just people, but also animals and birds. Because everything is going to be resurrected, remember that. So as everything is resurrected, obviously they're all going to spread. So, بَلْكَانُوا لَا يَرْجُونَ نُشُورًا They do not fear any resurrection. Now this ayah teaches us a very, very important lesson. That the people of Lut, why were they destroyed? Because they did not fear resurrection. And when they did not fear the resurrection, what happened? They did not believe in the messenger, they did not follow the messenger, and they did not change their ways. They refused to change their ways. So when a person does not have the fear of the hereafter, what does that lead to? Committing many sins, committing many crimes. Because he does not fear anyone is going to question him. He does not fear he's going to suffer any consequences. He doesn't have any concern, any fear like that. So he goes on doing whatever he pleases, whatever he wants to. Similarly, we see that the people of Mecca, despite the fact that they saw the end of the people of Lut, they saw this place, they witnessed this place, and they passed by it regularly, they did not take a lesson. Why? Because لَا يَرْجُونَ نُشُورًا What does that show to us? That a person can be taught, can be shown many, many things. You can try to teach him many lessons. You can try to show him many things that should shake his heart, that should melt his heart. That should make him change himself. But what is it that prevents him from changing, from taking any lesson? What is it? It's la yarjuna nushura. When a person does not fear the resurrection, when he does not fear the hereafter. Because when a person is concerned about his akhirah, then what's going to happen? Even the slightest warning is going to leave a huge impact on him. The slightest warning. But if a person is not concerned about the akhirah, then no matter what you tell him, it's not going to make a difference. وَإِذَا رَأَوْكَ And when they see you, meaning when the people of Mecca, when the mushrikeen, when they see you. And who does you refer to? The Prophet ﷺ. What is their reaction? 
in yattakhidunaka they do not take you illa huzuan except in mockery every time they see you what is their immediate reaction they start making fun of you they start mocking at you they start joking about you they start passing jokes passing negative remarks about you making one another laugh in yattakhidunaka illa huzuan And how do they mock at you? What do they say about you? أَهَذَا الَّذِي بَعَثَ اللَّهُ رَسُولًا This is the man whom Allah has raised as a messenger. This is the person who is supposed to be a messenger. Out of all people, out of all these great leaders, out of all these influential and wealthy men who exist in our society, this is the person whom Allah has chosen to be a messenger. أَهَذَا الَّذِي بَعَثَ اللَّهُ رَسُولًا As if to say Allah could not find anybody else. that if this is the man who is supposed to be a messenger then he's a liar because allah would not choose such a person this is what they say why would they say this why would they say this out of arrogance out of mockery in order to belittle him in order to undermine his efforts ahad alladhi ba'atha allah rasula so what do we see that as soon as the people of makka whenever they would see the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they would start making fun of him they would try to find faults in him they would try to find shortcomings in him that he is supposed to be an orphan he is supposed to have only one wife he is not supposed to be that wealthy he is not supposed to be that influential they forgot about all of his good characteristics how they used to praise him and respect him before he became a prophet they forgot all of those things and now they could only point out the negative things and those negative things were not really negative they were just negative because they consider them to be negative there is nothing wrong if a person is extremely wealthy or less wealthy or or poor similarly so what if a person was an orphan he's an adult now he's 40 years of age now so what if he grew up as an orphan he's successful today so this is something very true that when people do not want to accept what you're telling them then what do they start doing they start attacking you they don't want to listen to what you're saying because they don't like the message they don't like what you're telling them and because they have no excuse what do they start doing they start attacking the person they start making fun of him they start talking negatively about him trying to highlight his faults in surah al-anbiya ayah 36 we learn wa idha ra'aka alladhina kafaru in yattakhidunaka illa huzwa And when those who disbelieve see you they take you not except in ridicule and what do they say ahad alladhi yadhkuru alihatakum is this the man who insults your gods so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he had a very serious attitude about his mission that whenever he would see the people he would talk to them about it but the people they had a very non serious attitude they did not wish to believe and this is why they would start mocking at him they would start making fun of him and this might happen today as well that you go tell somebody about something and what do they say who are you do you remember what you used to do two days ago you were so different and now you think you're so pious and righteous who are you to say this to me who are you to tell me about this you did everything you wanted and now you've changed and you don't want me to enjoy many times children young girls they have this complaint against their mothers that when you were young you did whatever you wanted and now you're telling me to wear hijab You're telling me to behave differently. You're telling me to do this and to do that. You did everything you wanted, and now you're telling me to do something different. So this is the problem with who? With those people who do not like the truth, who do not wish to accept the truth, who do not wish to live by the truth. That instead of looking at the message, they start criticizing the bearer of the message, the one who is telling them. They start attacking him. and they would say in kada la yudilluna an alihatina he almost would have misled us from our gods in kada in over here gives the meaning of indeed and kada yakadu what does it mean when something is at the verge of happening almost happening so he was about to he almost would have misled us from our gods meaning He almost would have convinced us to not worship our gods. What is in kada show? That he's so smart, he's so intelligent, 
He almost convinced us. But you know what? We're smarter because we didn't give in. إِنْ كَادَ لَيُضِلُّنَا عَنْ آلِهَتِنَا لَوْ لَا أَنْصَبَرْنَا عَلَيْهَا Had we not been patient over it. Meaning, had we not stood patiently by our gods, over the worship of our gods. Now over here, what do we see? That the people of Mecca, they would say to one another, that this man, he seems to be so convincing. He is so certain about what he's saying that he almost changed our minds. He almost convinced us to believe in him. And this is the reality of haqq, truth. That it's clear. It's clear. And it is such that nothing can stand against it. When something is true, and a person believes in it with conviction, then he can convince anyone. And the Prophet wasallam. He had the truth. And he believed in it with conviction. And when he spoke to the people, he convinced them. They would have nothing left to say to him. They would have no argument against him. They were defeated in argument. So instead of accepting their defeat, what would they start doing? They would start mocking at the Prophet ﷺ. Because this is the way of who? Of those who have suffered defeat. That when they have nothing left to say, what do they start doing? Mocking, making fun, joking, trying to lighten up the situation and trying to disregard all that was established thus far. So they say that in كَادَ لَيُضِلُّنَا عَنْ آلِهَتِنَا لَوْ لَا أَنْصَبَرْنَا عَلَيْهَا He almost convinced us had we not been patient over our gods. What does it mean by this? لَوْ لَا أَنْصَبَرْنَا The word sabr has been used. What do we think sabr is? And when you're suffering from a difficulty, you don't complain. Isn't it? This is what we think sabr is. But what does sabr mean? That you control yourself, habs and nafs, on something that you know is right. It is to control yourself, to hold yourself on what you know is right, on what you know you should be doing. So for example, when it comes to doing something right, doing something good, even if it goes against your desires, even if you find it difficult, what does sabr mean? What does sabr mean? You still do it. Even if you find it very, very challenging. Similarly, if you find an opportunity to do something wrong, what does sabr mean over there? You don't let yourself do it. You don't allow yourself to do it. And sabr also means that when a person is suffering from a difficulty, when a calamity, a misfortune has struck him, then how does he react? How does he behave? Does he lose himself? No. He remains calm. He's crying. But he's not saying anything negative. He's not doing anything negative. He's not leaving what he should be doing. He's not doing what he should not be doing. So this is what sabr is. And sabr is basically to not give up. This is what sabr is. Because what are they saying? Lawla an sabarna alayha. Had we not remained firm, meaning we did not give up. So sabr in its essence is what? Do not give up. And when you've started something, that is important to you. What does it mean? You don't give up at the beginning, you don't give up in the middle, and you don't give up at the end. Rather, you start it, you bear all the difficulties and challenges, and you complete it, you reach the end. This is what sabr is. Because remember, that whenever you start doing something good, you will always find it challenging at the beginning. So what do you need at that time? Just remember when you started the course. How doing the lesson of just one page seemed so big, so challenging. What did you need at that time? Sabr? I have to do it. But do you need sabr only at the beginning? No. You need sabr throughout the journey. So even today, sometimes when the lessons are very, very long, what do you need? Sabr. Now do you need the sabr only at this time? No. You need it all the way until the end. You need to hold on to it. You need to keep doing what you have to do. So sabr is what? Do not give up. And remember especially that when you're doing the course, that shaitan attacks people at the beginning, he attacks people in the middle, and he also attacks people at the end. I've seen this. Experienced this. Witnessed this. That especially when it comes to this course, anything good that a person is doing... Shaitan definitely attacks people at the beginning. There are some people who cannot continue right from the beginning. And then what happens? 
people who have made it through the beginning, when they reach the middle, shaitan comes and attacks them as well. And then what happens? They forget about all they have achieved thus far, and they think they cannot continue anymore, and they give up. And then what happens? Shaitan also comes at the end. That all of the struggle, all of the effort that a person has put in, he wants that all that effort should be wasted. So what does sabr mean? That you keep holding on. You do not give up. Once you've started, once you've made up your mind, you tell yourself, I'm not leaving until I complete this. I'm not giving up until I finish. And this is something very true that you can apply even, for example, to the class. That at the beginning you find it difficult to come in the morning. And then during the day you're like, this is getting very long. This is getting very tiring. And then towards the end of the day, let me just leave 15 minutes early. Let me just leave 5 minutes early. So shaitan comes again and again. What do you have to do? Persist, hold on, don't give up. And if you look at it, what did the mushrikeen of Makkah say? That he was about to lead us astray from the worship of our idols had we not remained patient. Meaning we did not give up. We stayed firm. So in this is a huge lesson for us. That if these people remained so firm on falsehood, on idolatry, that no matter what evidence was given to them, no matter how the truth was shown to them, they refused to give up. What is our duty? That no matter what challenge comes, we should remain firm as well. If they are so firm, shouldn't we be more firm? Of course. We learned earlier that, وَجَعَلْنَا بَعْضَكُمْ لِبَعْضٍ fitna. أتصبرون? Are you going to have sabr or not? So life is full of difficulty. Sometimes those challenges come from the situation that we're in. Sometimes from the people who are with us. Sometimes people who are opposing us. Constantly we face challenges. What is our duty? What are we supposed to do? What is the way of dealing with these difficulties and challenges? Sabr. That imagine when the Prophet ﷺ was trying to tell them about the tawheed, about the oneness of Allah, they remain firm on shirk. They refuse to change their ways. Refused. And we learn in Surah Sa'ad, Ayah 6, that وَانْطَلَقَ الْمَلَأُ مِنْهُمْ أَنِمْشُوا وَاصْبِرُوا عَلَىٰ آلِهَتِكُمْ إِنَّ هَذَا لَشَيْءٌ يُرَادٌ And the eminent among them went forth, saying, continue, and be patient over the defense of your gods. Continue on your ways and be patient. Remain firm on the defense of your gods. Indeed, this is a thing that is intended. So if the Prophet ﷺ tried to convince them so much, he showed the haq to them. The Qur'an, so many evidences of tawheed are given. But look at their behavior. No matter what is said to them, they remain firm. So what should be our way? What happens with us? Somebody says one negative remark, and there we are doubtful. Should we do this? Should we not do it? We become shaky. That person looked at me with those eyes and I don't know, should I do it, should I not do it? We become so shaky, we become so fearful, but look at the mushrikeen of Makkah. No matter what evidence was given to them, they refuse to change their ways. Then why do we fall so weak? Why do we become so weak? There's a nice quote in our Fiqh Salah book in the chapter of Khashu. Um, when Khalaf bin Ayyub was asked, uh, why do you not swat at flies while performing salah? Do they not bother you? He said, I will not do something that might become a habit and thus spoil my salah. Then he was asked how he observed patience in that situation, and he replied, I was told that sinners observe patience when they are flogged by the Muslim authority, and they even boast about being patient in that situation. If I am standing before my Lord, would I move because of a fly? That we get distracted we get discouraged by the slightest of things. Somebody says one negative thing, one thing comes before us, the phone beeps, and there it is, all our attention, all our focus, all our determination is gone. And we lose everything. But look at him, what did he say? I take inspiration from who? From those people who are flogged. That when they're flogged, they still don't give up. And they boast about it. I got a hundred lashes, I got fifty lashes and still I'm going to do what I'm doing so why should I be distracted by one fly, why you see when something is important to you when you like something when you believe in it then no matter what other people say to you 
no matter what other people do to you, you will not give up. You will not give up. So many times we've seen people who want to marry somebody, the whole family opposes them. The entire family. But what is their behavior? I know of someone who persisted two years, refused to marry anybody else. They said, I'm only going to marry this person. The entire family was against them. Eventually they gave up. Similarly, if a girl wants to go to school, wants to study a particular subject, wants to become a doctor or something like that, the entire family opposes them. But what is her behavior? I'm going to do it. No matter what anybody says. The parents are trying to convince them. They try to get other family members involved. But no. When you've made up your mind, nobody can change you. Similarly, when it comes to the deen, this is the kind of firmness that we must have. This is the kind of determination and resolve that we must have. That once you believe with conviction, then don't get distracted by flies. Don't get distracted by little, little things. One of the sisters, she was mentioning that when she learned about that in salah you're supposed to raise your hands, the Raf ul Yadain, when she did it at home once, one of the relatives, he saw her and he got so angry that she's become a Shia, you know, she's raising her hands like them. And uh, everybody got so angry and upset with her. And her father sat her down that, what are you doing? Because they had never seen anybody doing it except for that Shia, when they prayed, they raised their hands up and down, right? So she faced a lot of opposition. A lot of criticism. But she said, this is what I have learned. This is what we're supposed to do. I don't care what you say. I don't care what you think of me. I'm going to do it. Now obviously it depends on how you deal with people. But the point over here is that when you know you have to do something, then do it. Don't get discouraged. Don't get distracted. Don't get demotivated by the criticism of people by the mockery of people, by the objections of people. Because you will see yourself, when you want to do something, you do it anyway. So when it comes to the deen, apply the same principle. If you stop your ways, if you give up, then how are other people going to learn? How is the truth going to spread? If each person starts compromising, giving up, then how is the truth going to spread? So in order to spread the truth, we have to live by it. And in order to live by it, we have to have determination. So the mushrikeen of Makkah, what did they say? That, إِن كَادَ لَيُضِلُّنَا عَنْ آلِهَتِنَا لَوْلَا أَنْ صَبَرْنَا عَلَيْهَا Look at how proud they are about their determination. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَسَوْفَ يَعْلَمُونَ And soon they will know. حِينَ يَرَوْنَ الْعَذَابَ When they see the punishment, that مَنْ أَضَلُّ سَبِيلًا Who is more astray in way? That right now they consider themselves to be those on the truth. But very soon they will find out who is actually on the truth and who is more astray when it comes to the right way. And when will that be? In the dunya as well as the akhirah. Very soon the truth was shown to the people. At the conquest of Makkah, before that even at the battle of Badr, at the defeat of the Meccans, so many times it was shown to them. In the dunya and also in the hereafter. We'll listen to the recitation of these ayahs.